just a challenge getting here, that's for sure. Good. Seems like the light, well, I come from downtown Bradenton. So I guess that light there on the first, 64 going east, it doesn't let so many cars go through. We're now going to uh, open up the uh, meeting of the joint. Uh, Boy, that didn't take you long. Good you Lord. That's what I said. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the convention center. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, they had stuff already here. That, okay, we're getting there. Well. Again, welcome everybody to uh, this late afternoon work, or not really work session, but a joint meeting. We're in the uh, county staff will be giving a presentation of where we are at with the infamous Lincoln Pool. Uh, our uh, goal here, oh, there, there we go. go. Oh my God. Whoa, hello. Um, you know, is, as I've said, the staff will open up with a presentation of where we are with the Lincoln Pool. Uh, after that presentation, we will open it up to any public comment that is here where people would like to speak uh, regarding the Lincoln Pool. And then upon the conclusion of the public comment, we will open it up to the commissioners and the city uh, commissioners as well for their comments. And then at that point, we will adjourn the meeting uh, go back. Uh, hopefully the city will go back and meet with their folks as the county will go back and, and then we will uh, hopefully negotiate and get back together. And if we need to have another one of these meetings in the next month or whenever it's appropriate, then we will. But hopefully after we go through the presentation today, we'll all have some food for thought on what uh, the options are. And then we can try to go from there and ultimately get what has always been one of my goals since I've been on the commission is getting this Lincoln Park pool built. It's been in the works for, well, Ever. decades at, at a minimum. And uh, let's, let's not turn it into centuries. And um, so with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Ed and he will uh, introduce the uh, speakers, Tom and so forth to go through the presentation. Then again, we will open it up for uh, public comment. Good evening. We're looking at this as an informational meeting to provide all the elected officials information on where we are with this project. It's, uh, as the chair said, we've been at this, in my records, I was looking back in the early 2000s for discussions between the city and the county about a pool. And then we ran into a problem of all getting poor. And uh, during the poor stages, about the only thing we could do is build a splash park, which wasn't exactly anybody's dream of what the pool was supposed to be. We're now coming out of the recession in the last couple of years. Amendment one failed, which we're all kind of thankful about that one. And we'd like to move forward on the pool. So we proceeded with doing a procurement based on what we called the vision. And the vision was a competitive complex, but more importantly, a facility to teach children how to swim. That's where it, in my records show, that's what it all started is. How do we teach children to swim? and we've uh, a bit morphed into the fact that we needed a competitive pool, so we looked at that. We went out for a procurement. The procurement results came in. We were a bit surprised by the results, and we're gonna take you through those this evening. And the question is, where are we going to go from here? When we got the results in, we didn't like them. We spent, and we didn't wanna share all that information with everybody right before the Christmas holidays. And so we just sat on that over the holidays. But during the holidays, we looked at what's an alternative. And you'll see an alternative presented by Tom here shortly. And then we'd like to see where folks would like to go from here. So it's informational at the end of this meeting. We would figure the city will go back and chat about what you heard tonight. The county commissioners will go back and have a meeting, a workshop, or a, or a general meeting to talk about where they want to go. And then we should come to some consensus sooner rather than later about how it is we want to proceed to get to the finish line of having a facility for the children north of the river to be able to swim and uh, for the high school students to practice. And uh, if we can get there, we would be oh so thankful. So with that, pending any questions, I'm gonna ask Tom to make a presentation. You have a PowerPoint in front of you that was prepared for this purpose to make sure that everybody has the same information as we go into the next round of how do we get to the finish line. So with that, Tom, if you'll take it away. Thank you, sir. Um, 
My name is Tom Yarger. I'm with uh, Property Management in Manatee County. I'm the Construction Services Manager. Angela Hans is with me. She's the Project Manager for this project. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take you through the project background a little bit. There'll be a couple of slides about that. Um, we'll look at the conceptual site plan comparison between the $3 million pool and a $7 million pool. Uh, we're going to talk about the RFP and the original scope of services and what we expected we would see in our $3 million option. Uh, the budget option uh, for a reduced <coughs> scope at $3 million, the budget option in detail on, the, on a revised and modified $5 million option, which is the option that Ed referenced that we came up with over the Christmas holiday. Uh, and then I have a slide on the city-county funding breakdown. Um, that if uh, we'll talk about at the end because uh, as we all know it comes down to money so that's where we'll end up so with the project background the original RFP scope of services that the county requested uh, was for uh, an eight-lane USA swimming certified competition pool um, that would have been eight lanes 25 yards by 25 meters and would have accommodated or would accommodate high school, college, and international or Olympic swimming. Uh, there would be a learn to swim pool with a zero entry. Um, that pool was about 2,000 square feet and a zero entry is um, an area where somebody can step into the pool in ankle deep water and walk uh, gradually down into water that uh, gets up to about four feet. So and that's, that's the learn to swim pool. Um, it also included shade structures and uh, some accessories there, benches and things like that. Uh, there was a new support building, which would be the required restrooms, locker rooms, showers. Uh, there was an office for pool staff uh, and a little bit more office space um, um, for some administrative offices. Uh, the existing splash park would have been upgraded uh, with an additional up to three or four uh, additional features. The splash park currently is designed uh, with the pumping system and the pool deck area to allow for an addition of just splash park features. We don't need to expand the pool deck. All of the feature um, attachments are in the deck already and the pool pumps are there to support those features. Um, and we were also talking about improved off-street parking which would have been some uh, additional paved parking that would have been adjacent to and to serve the pool area and the recreation area. We had um, three ad alternates, actually two ad alternates. One was for a main pool dive well which would allow for one meter and three meter diving. And we have a shared pool amenities, which are a support kitchenette, some space for lockers and tower showers uh, on the pool deck and things like that. So that's what we were asking for in the original RFP. We are currently at 30% design. Um, and right now, what was presented to Manatee County for the Lincoln Park pool by the design team, John Swift, uh, was a one combination four lane pool with a zero entry. So it would be a combination four lane practice pool it would not be certified by usa swimming for any type of competition it would be 75 excuse me 25 yards long so that we could use that as a practice facility as an overflow if we needed it um, and the new support building size was reduced to a minimum program requirements and code compliance so there's not any extra storage space there's no extra room for offices there's a single office um, there's just enough restrooms and showers to accommodate what we would need to use the pool in accordance with health, uh, the health department standards. The cost of this is estimated at $3 million. The slide you see now on the left hand side, this drawing was pr produced and provided by the construction manager uh, during the RFP process and was represented to be what we could afford for, five, or for $3 million. This was our $3 million vision and we were told we could get this for $3 million. When we actually get to 30% plans, on the right is the $3 million pool option. So that's the combination pool, the reduced size of the restrooms and office spaces. Uh, there would be no parking or anything there. So that's a one pool design rather than a two pool, two pool design. So let me get to what we get for the $7 million option, which is presented to us as what we proposed in the original scope of services was a main pool, again, eight lanes, 25 meters by 25 yards, which is a competition pool of about 6,000 square feet, and it would accommodate all three high school, college, and international swimming events. Uh, one new support pool entry, uh, which was a zero entry, 2,000 square feet, and it would allow um, for about 38 individuals to learn to swim there. 
um, a support building of 3,400 square feet, which included some office space, storage space, um, the lockers and the showers that would be required for the two pool system and some additional office spaces. The splash park upgrades, we would add additional three features and a canopy to the splash park. The shared pool amenities, aprons, uh, covered areas, decks, deck showers, those types of things, and then the related site work and design. What was not included in the $7 million option is the add alternate for a dive well, an add alternate for additional pool amenities, which are exterior lockers, spectator seating, and those types of things. If you, the next slide shows the $3 million budget option, which is the pool that our construction manager tells us we can afford, is a combination learn to swim pool with four lap lanes, and it's 25 yards. This would not accommodate international or high school or or college sporting events, this would be a practice pool. It's, we have a new support building at 1,840 square feet, which is the bare minimum that would be required by the health department to open the pool based on the bathing load that we have. And the site work is the code compliant design and construction fees. It does not include splash park upgrades, a shared pool, excuse me, parking, site lighting, furniture fixtures, and equipment. So after we got our heads together to try to figure out what we could offer to the boards as an option that was not $3 million and not $5 million, or excuse me, $7 million, was a $5 million pool option and still has two pools. So what we came up with for $5 million is one main pool, which is USA Swimming certified. It's an eight lane, 25 yard competition pool, which would accommodate high school and college. It would not accommodate international swimming. A new support pool with a zero entry, which is 2,000 square feet. A newer support building, which is in size, slightly larger than the $3 million option, but smaller than the $7 million option, but still meets all the health, de health department requirements for restrooms, showers, and other amenities and it also includes the site work and design. What it does not include is it does not include asphalt parking, it does not include the splash park upgrades, it does not include furniture, fixtures, and equipment, or a pool certification for international or Olympic standards. Our last slide is the city-county funding breakdown. At the $3 million budget, there were discussions that the county would contribute $2,150,000 towards the $3 million pool, and that the city would contribute $850,000 toward the $3 million pool. That breakdown by percentage is approximately 72% by the county and 28% by the city. If we follow the same contribution percentages for the $5 million pool, we would be looking at $3,583,500 from the county and $1,416,500 from the city. If we determine that the $7 million budget is the one that we want to go with and following the same contribution percentages, the county's option would be about $5 million and the city's contribution would be about $2 million. And that is my presentation. Thank you, Tom. Before we uh, open it up for comment, there's a few facts that need to be known because we, uh, in having this discussion internally, we brought the folks that understand pools, such as Charlie Hunziker and his staff, and when you get into the question of community swimming, which is children's learning to swim or families going out to enjoy a day at the pool, um, it appears that uh, people think there'd be a conflict with the competitive side. Um, what we found out from the staff is the, uh, the summer swimming where the kids, are, for the most part, would be looking to swim between the months of May and September are not the months that competitive swimming takes place. Con competitive swimming takes place during the school year, for the most part, and so a, uh, the fact that there would be conflict between the two is, uh, is not a relevant issue to the, for the most part. Secondly, the uh, the number of competitive events we currently host in Manatee County is approximately 12 a year. We've looked back over the last several years. That's, 
out of 365 days in the year, that's 12 days. That's uh, roughly eight of those at uh, GT Bray Park and four at John Marble Park. So it's not like we have a great uh, competitive spirit because there's communities surrounding us that are into the pool business. They have more pools, they have more competitive pools, they've incurred the cost over the years to build those facilities. Mm -hmm. So to think we could be competitive in um, attracting uh, big school or big university meets, it's, we've just not been there traditionally. It would take a lot more money than this facility. But uh, we think that it's important for the high school students north of the river to have an opportunity to train and we think a training facility is important for them. But the most important thing we want to chat with you about is the how do we provide for families to have a swimming opportunity north of the river during the months when they most want to swim. Um, again, there's no dive well in this proposal because we, the staff from the Parks Department says the dive well we have at GT Bray, there's only 50 divers in all of Manatee County that use that facility. So it's not exactly a hot issue in the county to have a number of dive wells around the county. And then there's the operating cost of a pool. A pool costs roughly about $400,000 a year to operate a pool of this nature. And even if we were to get into the competitive business of trying to recruit um, competitive events we probably couldn't earn 20000 in a year from those events, let alone to offset the $400,000 cost we incur to operate the pool. Those are just facts we need to get on the table as we talk about this. Um, when we went through and we were surprised by that, and I've used that word twice now, the proposal, we knew that no one, no one is going to like that $3 million option. So we, uh, we spent some time over the holidays looking at a $5 million option, but that is probably a discussion item. Of what are we willing to spend and what are the, we really, really want in the community? And we leave that to the elected officials to have a bit of discussion about what's on your mind tonight so that we can go back and uh, the uh, city council have a discussion, the board of county commissioners have a discussion and we'll see where we go from here and what's the final plans for making sure this pool happens um, sooner rather than later. So with that, I'll turn it back to the chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Ed, and thank you, Tom, for the uh, presentation. And as I mentioned at this point, I'd like to open it up to uh, public comments. So those here, I'm not sure where we're going to... Good evening. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Good evening, everybody. I think I'm one of the senior pastors in Manatee County. Um, when I was saved at a very early age at the what now Burrell Clemens Pool, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife after 53 years, we were baptized in that pool. And uh, I enjoyed it because I lived in Bradenton. Since I came to Palmetto and we don't have a swimming pool, uh, there were different uh, officials as well as community uh, persons that wanted to have a pool that would serve the people. We understand that there are people who can afford their own pool, but the majority of people cannot. And when we came around to hearing uh, the first uh, proposals, uh, we were set on the $7 million budget pool. Uh, and that's hard to shake. It really is. And so uh, the $5 million is kind of a... Uh, I guess it's a spiritual thing in me to give a little to get a lot. And so I believe that it would benefit our community if we can get that and uh, have as far as um, uh, middle school, high school, and, and families during the summer. If you go to Lincoln Park um, now and uh, see the activities that are there and uh, come down 29th Street where my church is and see the basketball court in the summer and how busy it is that we've provided for our community, it will be well used. So we're asking at least at this part, if you will support the $5 million budget, then uh, I can swallow very hard and say, uh, I won't fight against 
getting the seven million. Thank you. My name is MacArthur Sellers, and I am the president of the Washington Park CDC. I used to be a, an advisory board member for the Palmetto CDC. I'm also a former pastor and a resident of Palmetto. And I'm always concerned of the switcheroo. I'll just be point blank, okay? When we look at our community, and I heard the report, but I'm under the understanding that you're building more schools north side. And I'm under the understanding that the population is growing. I'm under the understanding that if it's available, more people will avide themselves to utilize it, you only have 12 folks diving perhaps because that's all you have available. When you have more, people get more and do more. So let's not be short-sighted. Instead of going for the five million, which I understand is a lot of money, let's shoot for the seven million for what's best for the community as a whole, and I understand it's, uh, and I got to put it out there, it's in the Afro-American community, and perhaps that's, that may be a hindrance, but let, let's look beyond that and say, what's best for the overall community, and can we give the best product possible? Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Betty Sales Rose, and it's been a long time for us over here in Palmetto, Florida, north of the river. We always get the neck of everything. When it comes to us, you never want to do anything for us. Now, listen, I'm with Reverend Sellers. Why are you going to drop it down to $5 million? Go with the $7 million. I think we earned this. Now, I remember years ago, when my brother was alive, he said, that's what we need. We do need a pool here, see more sales over here in Palmetto. And we should have been at a pool. But I guess he didn't live to see the little splash pool. Now, I was very discouraged about the, that splash pool over there to Lincoln Park. We deserve better. Now, I know we have the money. We should work hard to try to get this pool built. Not only because it's over in the minority neighborhood, it's for everybody to visit it. And see, say, hey, Palmetto can shine too. Now, I could go way back now, because I do keep up, because my brother learned me this, that when y'all put the effort through for GT Bray, y'all got it done. When y'all change it to a marble pool, when nothing say, y'all went and pushed for it. So you all, Everybody here, city, county, you need to push together. We need that pool. We really do need it. It is not only going to be served by a minority, which I am one. It's going to be served for all races, all people of color, everybody. So you need to get on board, work with them workshop, and try to put it in place. Because we are somebody. Palmetto, been down all, because I never forget, and um, when y'all built the Civic Center, it is in Palmetto, but not the Civic Center, in Manatee County Civic Center. But it's in, you know, Brady, you know, you know, it should have been Palmetto Civic Center because it's here, right here in our neighborhood. So we got to get together and work together to try to get something done. We really do. And I'm saying, no, I want to go for seven million. I'm not going to go for some little and people come here and say, ah, I don't want to swim in that. And you go over there to a pool over in Brayden, GT Bray, it got everything in need. No, I'm going for seven million, so we should work together. That's the bottom line. We got to work together, the city and the county, we got to come up with something to get this pool built. 
not with no five, seven. If you have to go further, you have to go further because we need a pool over here. And yes, we do need to have one for some of the kids to learn how to swim. i never forget, when I was coming up, it was segregation days. Okay, I had to go over to the Braden pool, East Braden, and learn because you died for the pennies. But we don't have to do that no more. And thank you for letting me talk just a little bit for seven million. Good evening. My name is Henry Lawrence. I, I don't have a whole lot to say, but I, uh, I agree. I think that we should not chart change this project. We should go for the seven million. I'm understanding that the operating budget would be 400,000 based on this, on the three million, five million, seven million. I might understand. I'm understanding that it would be the same operating cost. Uh, and my thoughts on this, if, we're, if, we, if we build a pool on the standards of international level, I know it said that operating the money's coming in wouldn't be but a few thousand dollars, but there's a possibility that there are other opportunities may come uh, as a result of us having a first class uh, Olympic style pool facility here, in which would not just uh, benefit Palmetto, but it would benefit the whole county. And it's, it's, it's time, and these things are starting to come, but for so long, this district has been neglected on a major scale, and things are finally starting to see there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and I like to say, let's don't let that light stop shining. Let's make that light shine brighter. Let's get these things done. Uh, um, also, the Canal Road, all these things have been neglected, and we're finally on a course of doing this. Let's don't shortchange it. Let's seek other opportunities to raise funds with this facility so that it can help uh, sub subsidize the cost of operating it. Uh, I'm not speaking from a standpoint of, of someone that has expertise in the area, but I'm just speaking from a standpoint of what I saw. And if the operating budget is going to be 400000 regardless of what size it is, then let's, let's make some other things happen. And that's, that's what I have to say. Thank you. God bless y'all. Happy New Year to everybody. Anybody else in the public? Thank you. Thank you. If not, then we will uh, move forward. So put the mic, there, kind of move them around a little bit for everyone to get them. I, I just have a couple of questions. One thing I don't see and I haven't heard is how many people can swim in the pools that we're looking at here? I mean, it, it, I realize we're talking about um, being able to practice your swimming, but it doesn't look like it's very large. I can't tell by the drawing how many people can get in these pools to swim. How many kids, how many adults that are just from Palmetto or the surrounding areas can get in this pool to enjoy it? Three million, five million, and seven million. Uh, Madam, the, um, in the three million dollar pool, um, we can fit approximately 68 swimmers. That's the modified pool. In the seven million dollar budget, we have the 25 meter by 25 yard pool, and right. we have the reduced square footage, 2,000 square foot pool for learn to swim. And in the off season, when we would be able to open swim in the competition pool, it would hold 161 bathers. And in the smaller pool, it would hold 38 bathers. That's, that's the capacity. It, in the $5 million pool, the capacity would be uh, slightly smaller um, in the s competition pool. I don't have that exact number, but it's a 25 yard by eight lane rather than a 25 yard by 25 meter. So you may lose a little bit of capacity, but I wouldn't think a whole lot. And 
the learn to swim pool is the same size, so there'd be 38 swimmers there. Okay. Um, I think another thing that concerns me in, in looking at the three, five, and seven, there's so many things that aren't included that are kind of necessary, like shaded areas, um, uh, parking, furniture. Um, I mean, so even though we look at three, five, or seven, those three options don't really include a lot of what we're going to need because you can't have parents there sitting on the side in the sun. You need some shade. Yeah. So, I mean, ha have we looked at that thoroughly to figure out what it might, I guess where I'm going with this. Um, and you know, Mr. Sellers, I've heard you speak so many times and, and Henry and, you know, the thing of it is, is that this board, the county commission, uh, a year or two ago brought this up because we wanted to get this pool built. Mm -hmm. It is our hope to build. We want a pool in Palmetto. And, and, and let me tell you, there was some fighting that went on to try and have it in Palmetto at, at Lincoln Park. Um, I know the, the mayor can vouch for all that because I know she was at the meetings. So we want to get this done. This is not something that we don't want to do. It's not something we want to do halfway. We want to make sure it's big enough and good enough for the people to enjoy and swim in. Um, Reverend Lawrence, you know, you know me. So, I mean, that, that's just the way it is. So I think another thing that, that bothers me too that I think we need to look into is this $400,000 maintenance a year. There's no way it can be the same amount of maintenance if we have two pools of different sizes, uh, you know, the three million, five million, and seven million. I, I find it hard to believe it would be exactly the same is that right? Am I understanding you? You understood me to um, quote an estimate that was given for the $7 million pool. At the $5 million level, it would be something less than four hundred, dollars and then at the $3 million level, it would be less than, something less than $5 million level. I can't give you those exact numbers, but it wouldn't ever be more than $400,000 a year is, is our estimate. So okay. again, something smaller would be a lesser operational cost. And are all these pools, uh, do they all include heaters so that they could be open year-round for swimmers? Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious, and maybe I, I don't know where we came up with two pools. I never remember in any of our meetings us talking about two pools. But that's neither, I guess, here nor there. But what I would like to see is we need to figure out, and I want to hear from the district commissioner, we need to figure out a way to be able to get the best pool with all the amenities that we need um, so that if we're going to do it, let's do it right, I guess is what I'm saying. And I don't know that the seven million or the five, as we're seeing here with two pools is going to be able to do that for us. So I guess it is something for me that I, I still have a lot of questions even after this presentation um, that I think we, we have a lot of questions or at least I do on, on why two pools and could we not perhaps go with one bigger pool uh, and get the other amenities in there for the same amount of money. I'm, I'm curious about that. I, I don't know. I don't know where we came up with two pools. So uh, can, somebody, can you answer that? Can you answer that for me? I'm not sure what the question was. I, where did we come up with two pools? With the five and the seven million. Because I don't remember that being part of our discussion uh, on our board anyway. Maybe I'm wrong, but. As, as part of the visioning process, we met with the Board of County Commissioners and they asked us to develop I'm a pool one of those. or pools. And we were also directed then to, staff was directed to work with the City of Palmetto to come up with some vision of what we wanted to see. And part of that visioning was a competition pool and a learn to swim pool. Oh, right. okay. So it came up actually, not so much from our board. I got it. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Bellamy? Okay, I want to take my time and um, get through this. There's a couple of things that, um, for, the, for the record, we need to make sure that we're out there, not to disrespect anyone, um, but um, we have a responsibility um, as community leaders to make sure that we um, put any project together. And if we are going to put our county um, stamp on this, we need to make sure we do it the right way. Um, one, one of the things that I'm, I'm concerned about is our mindset here. Um, it seems like 
um, tykes pairs um, north of the river are begging to be served. And I don't want my mic to go out because I want everybody to be clear <laughs> with the things that I'm about to say. It seems like tykes pairs north of the river are begging to be served. That's the first thing. And unfortunately, some of my interpretation coming from the county administrator um, is less persuasive um, as far as uh, more reasons not to based on the money instead of um, us having the ability as county commissioners, the ability to direct and approve what he come up with. So I think we need to look at that approach totally different as far as um, county commissioners that we need to make sure that we come up with this money and everybody um, has a role. Now, the terminology accountability has come up and um, within talking to some other people. And I'm sure that means the city of Palmetto has to be accountable for their part as well as um, the county. My concern is the mindset of this entire project. Um, we have an opportunity to do something very unique um, where we can put our stamp on this pool, not just for recreation, for recreation, education, and competition. We have an opportunity on that, all right, with the taxpayer's dollars. And that opportunity highlights a couple of things. It gives the taxpayer dollar to uh, opportunity to serve the taxpayers, and not just North River. Please, please, change your mindset. Operate outside the box. Have an opportunity to have an innovative thought within you. Don't just limit it to the point that the only ones that's going to take and visit this pool is the city of Palmetto and the people from Palmetto. If we do this the right way, if we do this the right way, the taxpayer's dollars should do two things. It should serve the taxpayer, and it should attract not just individuals north and south of the river, but from the community and other counties abroad if we do it the right way. I think, based on some of the current conversations and everything that has taken place, me right now where I stand as a county commissioner, I'm truthfully embarrassed. And the reason why I'm saying that I'm embarrassed, it seems like we're struggling to do what's best for an area. And I think every area, every project in the county should be served with our best foot forward. And if we're liking those amenities, I think we have an obligation to take and ask the county administrator to see, hey, what are our options? And we need to go and find those funds. It's, it's public record. It's public record. And I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but it's public record. The county has a billion dollar operating budget. And we're talking about seven million dollars. And if you do the math, I'm sorry the way I'm calculating it, I'm embarrassed. And the reason why I wanted to speak is because I challenge each and every one of you all to have an innovative mindset on this. I know this is a workshop, but we have a responsibility because when the project takes place, the city of Palmetto and their commissioners, their name's going to be on there. The county of um, Manatee, the commissioners, our names will be there. What are we leaving behind? What are we saying that we want to do north of the river to make sure we impact that community? We don't want to say we just want a recreation pool. How about the education opportunity? How about the competitive opportunity? There's a lot of opportunities, and if we do it the right way, if we do this the right way, we can take and highlight that particular community. You have four to six hotels within a three to five mile radius out there, as well as a mall, and we have a movie theater that's coming up. How about we think outside the box and use this pool and opportunity to attract people to our area? Well said. Yes, uh, Commissioner Smith, City of Palmetto. <laughs> Commissioner Smith, City of Palmetto. Um, what, I'm, what I'm looking at here is, um, first of all, my motion was for a competition pool. Uh, and that's what my motion was for when I made my motion. And uh, I think everybody from the City of Palmetto know what my motion was for a competition pool. Now, I think uh, Mr. Brian Williams want that. He want, we want to stick to that, a competition pool. That's what we want. Um, I think we got the means here to to have a competition pool. 
This is just not for the African American community. We have Hispanics that live in the area. We have Caucasians that live in the area. This is a mixed community. Now, what I'm looking at is, um, I think everybody should get together, city, county, and make this happen. And I want to be straight to the point. We, 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 as the people of this community and of the county, okay, you're going to build some more pools. Uh, I hope you ain't going to build a pool that's a competition pool after you leave from over, from north of the river, and then build one. I hope that don't happen. So actually, I think all of us should get together, and we should build a competition pool right there in Lincoln Park. And I don't see no reason why it can't be. I don't even know why we ain't here discussing this right here. I really don't. Because I know the county got the money, and I think the city can get some more money to, to help. We want a competition pool, city of Palmetto. We want our pool to look just like GT Praise on, or better. We got kids that are coming up that want to learn how to swim. We got kids that coming up that want to learn how to dive. We, we need this pool for our children. This is for the children. It's not really for us to sit in here and talk about tomorrow, can we get the money? We know we can get the money, so let's do it. Let's all get together and stop being sitting up here and tomorrow we having a meeting about this pool, and let's do the seven million, because we got the means to do it, and let's do it. We need the pool. City of Palmetto need that pool, and it'll be actually for the whole county. Competition pool. That's what we need. You're going to be building more high schools. The community is going to be getting bigger and bigger. You're going to need this pool, and everybody needs this pool, especially the city of Palmetto. We don't have one. Thank you. I've been here a long time, and I remember in the other room, some of us, probably Brian and I are the only ones that remember when Larry Bussell was the mayor, and we talked about a pool and had a meeting, and I was on the city council then. So I, I, this goes way back. First of all, I'd like staff to tell me, um, and I didn't know this, that we did not build the pool or pay for the pool at GT Bray. I didn't even know that till last week. I heard the school did for PICO funds or something. And with the agreement that we have to allow their school competitions for free, correct? How long ago did we build GT Bray? 1985? OK. OK. Um, all right. And I have no, and you hit it, Commissioner Smith, right on the head. I have no problem. Whatever we all decide, we're all going to go, like um, the chair said, we're all going to go back to our individual councils and see what we can do. I think that what's presented to us is fair to everybody. If the city of Palmetto will still do the 28% and we do the 71.667, Fine, if that's what it ends up being. I have no problems with it being a five or seven, whatever the community wants. Uh, the three millions, unfortunately, with all the costs going up, forget it. I mean, it's embarrassing. It looks like somebody's pool in a backyard. So we all don't want that. But it is about, I know Commissioner Bentley says it is a, it, uh, that the county can afford it. We all have to have some skin in the game with this. And that has always been the commitment of Palmetto since day one, since I've been involved and their commitment was always 28.33 percent so whatever we decide we need to go back to our commissions and we need to decide um, we've all wanted to pull if anybody that says that we haven't that's totally 100 percent not true i've been here since day one we're just a recession hit and we couldn't afford it and now we're back on the top of the saddle and before another recession hits we need to get this built so i support whatever the commissions want and whatever we're all willing to put their our own skin in the game like commissioner smith just said Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner oh, thank you. Um, so many great comments so far. I do have one question, and that is about the maintenance of the pool at $400,000. And I heard you say that that's an estimate, and that's for the $7 million option. Is that the bare minimum maintenance, or is that maintenance figure allowing us to put money aside for future capital needs? and? replacement items and, and things like that? Or is, just, is that just managing and running the pool? That's that's staffing, managing, and running the pool. Right. So that's really an unrealistically low number then. 
because uh, we probably we, should. Well, not for maintaining the pool. If if you're looking at um, renewing amenities and things like that, that would be budgeted on an as-needed basis. We, Ed we wants have, to inject something. If I could. <clears throat> we have experience in operating pools. We have Coach Clemens' pool, we have GT Bray, and we have Marble Pool. The staff came up with a number of about 350. I didn't want to go with 350 because we believe in under promise and over deliver. If we say 400 and bring it in at 350, people will be happy with us. If we say 350 and it comes in at 400, people will want to hurt us. So <laughs> well, we understand how this works, but we operate pools. We know it's going to cost over time for the chemicals, the lifeguards, the cleaning services, the, the amenities that we need to take care of that it'll probably cost between three hundred and fifty and four hundred thousand dollars a year. If you look at the difference it's in the pools between seven million and the five million dollar option, as Tom said earlier, they're about the same size. You lose the international flavor, but are about the same size for dealing with college and high school competitions, and they provide enough swim opportunity for the roughly the same number of children and families during the off season. Um, it's really a question of the amenities. And I, when I was talking to Commissioner Bellamy about this, I thought we need to get the pool in the ground is the first thing. Mm -hmm. We can grow into things as over time as future budgets come up and start talking about improving the parking lots and improving lighting and other amenities get the basic amenities, but get the pool in the ground because you only have one chance to put the pool in the ground. Put the right pool in the ground. And we think the operating costs will be between 350 and 400,000. We'll go through that final numbers as we go through putting the budget together to look at exactly how many lifeguards we have. As Commissioner uh, Bob brought up, a one pool versus two pools. You think two pools are gonna need more lifeguards than one pool. Do we make one pool just bigger? that you can do the competitive swim and the learn to swim in one facility, or do we need two pools? We kind of got hooked on two pools, but do we really need two pools? That's a discussion you all need to have. Can you do it all in one facility? The chemical sleeping could be less. The, uh, the workload on the staff would be less. It's discussions you need to have. Thank you, I appreciate that, and I really appreciate the philosophy of, of under promise and over deliver, so. Thank you very much. Um, I want to agree with Reggie Bellamy. We have a responsibility to provide an excellent pool for Palmetto. It's been a long, long time. They say big wheels turn slowly. Well, it's been at a crawl. And so the time is now. Um, having said that, I also understand it's easy to say, let's spend the $7 million. It's easy to say that, right? But that's real money, and that's money that we got to possibly take away from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So my idea would be, just as Ed said, to grow into it, but have a realistic plan for providing the best facility that we can possibly provide for Palmetto. And, and that includes the kitchenette that's not included. And that includes the shade structures that aren't included because you're gonna need that stuff. There's gonna be birthday parties and tons and tons of families there. So we need to have a plan to provide for that ultimately and go ahead and build what we can build now with the money that everyone's willing to allocate. But let's get to a, a really, really fantastic facility for Palmetto. Done. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, I kind of like going at the end so I can listen to everybody's comments. And you know, I, I I have to think that you know we have one job by statute as a county commission, and that is to adopt a budget. It's the one job that we have, so we are responsible for overseeing. If you look at the statute, that's what it says our one job is: mm -hmm. that we have to oversee the budget. And that means that we have to be concerned about budgetary <laughs> issues. We can say we're gonna spend $7 million, but we're talking about things that are even left out that are gonna cost more. Realistically, it's gonna be more than $7 million if we're gonna have shade structures, and I think shade structures are essential. We're talking about doing this right. But we also have to consider, and can't help but think this way, I'm a planner, this is not a lot of land. We have to 
We have to consider the soccer fields are still going to be there. The basketball still needs to consider. We cannot make this an international facility. There's not enough room. We can make it a competitive swimming pool with the right kind of amenities so that it can be something that we're proud of. But we don't have unlimited space and we don't have unlimited funds. We need to be realistic. We want to deliver this. We cannot, if you continually just shoot for the stars, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a view of the stars. You're not going to get something actually built. We need to have a realistic plan how this can be accommodated in the land that we have and how, what is important. I believe shade structures are important. I agree with Misty. This is going to be a community gathering place. It is today, you know, but we have limited parking. I think we want to have, you know, the $5 million pool along with some more amenities. Then we got to figure out what that's really going to cost and how we're really going to get this done. Exactly. You know, we can't just continue to say what we, what we hope it will be. We've got to say what it will be, how much it's going to cost, and then we got to build it. Okay. Good evening. I'm going to give you a little history. Back in 1953, I went to Ballard School. When school was out in the summertime, I climbed on a bus, and we went to Braden River on Highway 70 and took swimming lessons from the school system. The school system provided swimming lessons to the Manatee County students. Then they would take us two or three times out to the beach, and we'd learn in the salt water, in the beach. This prevented drownings because we learned how to swim. The important thing here is, as far as I'm concerned, is we've got to teach the kids how to swim. It's the kids that we're doing this for. We're not doing it for us. So we're fighting over a little bit of a thing here. And it's not us. It's the kids that we're fighting for. That's what Palmetto's fighting for. 1993, we'll move forward now. Commissioner Burton, or Councilman Burton, Councilman Smith, Charles, and Councilman Williams, myself, went to the county commission, and we wanted a pool. We asked for a pool to be built in Palmetto. We were willing to utilize, again, Lincoln Park back then. We had ideas that where we could put the pool. We had other places that we were going to put it. We got turned down because there was no money. All right, this was back in 93. Now, you just finished, it was back in 85 or 84 that GT Bray was done. Yes, it was done with something else. The county has grown tremendously, as we all know. However, we on the north side of the river haven't gotten the amenities that have come up in the rest of the county. Now, you can't tell me that with the growth on the north side of the river, that this county can't afford to put a pool in. What was your budget this year? $700 million? Our budget was $24, $25 million. Minuscule compared to yours. But again, we're going back to money. Now, Palmetto cannot afford, in my opinion, to put in any more money, and this will be an argument we'll have with my, my commission, but we can't afford to put in any more money. Now, we've got 16 acres of land over there that I think initially we offered to give you the whole park. And there's value to that, which if you don't have enough room for, as Bessie's saying, for um, an international pool, maybe the basketball courts could be moved into an area where you do have some additional land. But we're taking a initial response from the city of Palmetto, which was $850,000, for an Olympic-sized pool, which is the same as these two pools that we're looking in, in at the $5 billion budget item. So we're, we're proposing a 12,000-square-foot pool or 12,000-what-gallon pool 
no, it's not 12,000, yeah, it's 12,000 square foot pool. And the two pools equal 12,000 square foot, I think. So we're, we're cutting it in half, basically, as far as the pool, the competition pool, and giving you the same amount of money, plus now you want another $1.1 million. So I'm a little confused on what you're wanting to do here. You're wanting more money from us, and you're putting in a smaller competition pool. I, I'm not going to go for it. Um, this county can find the money. I assure you one thing's going to happen this year at one time. You're going to need some money for a special project that's going to come up, and you're going to find the money. And don't tell me it won't happen, because we will sit there and be looking. So I'm telling you now, this is that time. Find the money now. I, I won't go into the rest of it, but uh, there, there's plenty of things that, that can be said. Let's just get it done. Again, it's not for us, it's for the kids. Now, I just wanted to clarify some of the statements that were made earlier about the two pools because um, it was asked where that came from and it was alluded to that it came from the city of Palmetto. Um, in the conversations that the commission has had, we never discussed two pools at all. The two pools came into play when um, Charlie Hunsiger came to the commission on July 17th, 2017. There was a whole presentation done on the Lincoln Park aquatic facility. At that time, the county staff had came up with the ideal for the two pools. The commissioners never asked for two pools. That is what your staff brought back to us. And as Commissioner Williams was just stating, there are 16 acres there. The motion that was made back in January, I believe, of 2017, was that the city would give $850,000. We would donate the four acres of property, which at that time was what they considered needed for it and that we asked for an olympic size competition pool. That was what the city of Palmetto asked to do. And now we are here a year and a half later, and we're still talking about everything. We did ask for diving, but that was something that we didn't know if it could go or not. Um, because one of the things, I mean, as we're all talking about, most of us grew up here in the late 70s, early 80s, Palmetto High School couldn't have a swim team because we had nowhere to go. So that was the main point of um, the city asking for a competition pool. It's not so much for the Olympic international side, it's just for all the schools over here to have the same opportunities because with all the added costs with the busing now, you can't bus the kids all over the place. So all the new schools that are going north of the river, they need a place to have swim teams as well. Maybe it's something we can look at to talk with the school board to see if they have any funds they could throw into this too. If it's used for something like Commissioner Whitmore brought up, um, maybe we can find some other funds. But I do believe um, we need to find the money and I think it's time for this to happen for us. I mean, we've all sat here, he's talking about in the 50s, I'm talking about the 70s and 80s, and today in 2019, we still have no pool for our kids to have competitive swim teams or anything like that, plus all the kids that are drowning. I mean, I just had one in my neighborhood. Would they have had a pool? I'm not sure of the age of the child, but we need to teach our children how to swim, and it needs to be at a good place. And I think we all agree on that. I think we just need to come off the money and all work together. If we put all of our heads together, between all of us, I'm sure we can come up with a solution for everyone. Thank you. All right. I, I want to talk about the one pool or two pools. Um, I'm not necessarily sure how it came up, but I do know, um, looking at the land, um, there's a stormwater pipe that goes up under it. And based on the dimensions you know, of the pool, um, I think we had to look at, well, this is what, from what I understand, had to look at probably a split there, all right? And the split was the, co the competition pool would be in one area, and then the recreation and the educational pool would be in the other area. Um, from what I understand from the land, that's, that's why it, there, was, there was a split there. Um, so if we're, if we're looking at it from the competition stand, standpoint, um, based on the dimensions of the pool, it's not a, a, I mean, 
you won't have enough space to just put one big one because of that stormwater pipe. All right, so therefore, that's why it came up. Now, that's the way it was explained, it was explained to me. I want staff to comment on this so I can make sure uh, we, we can hear from it. <clears throat> Commissioners, um, it would be difficult to fit a large pool and the restroom, required restroom facilities north of the stormwater pipe that the commissioner I just wanted to be brought out. I mean, so because, yeah, some, some people need, need, need to know that <clears throat> as far as why um, we came up with the, with the two of them and how. Now, now that being said, well, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I have limited knowledge of how we came up with two pools, but I can say that if we wanted to have two pools or a just one larger pool, we're not tied to the location Good. on the north side of the stormwater pipe. We could shift to the other side of the stormwater pipe. One of the issues we have, and it's a site issue, um, and I didn't want to get too far into the weeds, right. but we have uh, a limited distance that we can get from our hydrant and our fire line without having to cost a lot more money to install the, the appurtenances we would need to be able to provide fire protection as required by the fire department for the locker room area. So, so, so now, now we know how we got the two pools now. Um, who put it out into like that? But there's a reason why. There, there, there's a reason why um, we're, we're looking at the two. My, my, my last um, thing that I, I think I'm going to say because I, I want to make sure we move forward on this is we, we only have one time to do this. We only have one time to do this. And, and within our process of one time to do it, we don't need to just think now. We need to think about tomorrow also. Okay, now let me bring that back. Not just today, but also the future. And one scenario that I want to bring to everyone around the table, um, you may have a nephew, you may have a niece, or a grandchild, or someone to move into the area because growth is coming one way or the other, all right? So we want to meet growth where it is. If we have someone that comes in with growth and said, listen, my goal is to take to be the next competitive swimmer and to take my high school team to a state championship with the swimming and things like that, should we forfeit them the opportunity because we can't come together and collaborate and put something on the table to make sure that we give the competitive pool, the recreation part, and the education part within this one point? I think we have an opportunity to, and we should. Okay, Commissioner Whitmore. After hearing everybody, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, the middle ground, the five million because of the amenities. But first of all, uh, we don't, and I need Ed to verify this, we don't use taxpayers' money to build pools, correct? Isn't that out of impact fees and at this point, I mean parks, 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 which was no. the new ones that are coming up like Lakewood Ranch, uh, there was one in Buffalo Creek at one point. No, I know you don't have a pool, but isn't that we, the we only way they- We put one in last night. Ed, has one out there. isn't that the only way that they could be paid? I mean, we have we pay for them out of general funds? No, no. We, we haven't? We don't, we've never built the pool. I know, that's what I'm trying, <laughs> sorry. We had a that's challenge as to, to what money we use. The, we don't build. This will be the first challenge we have. We acquired, Charlie, can you, uh, the Clemens pool? How did they get paid? Coach Clemens pool? I, I'm sorry, uh, that- Predates you? Predates me. I can tell you though, the, the marble pool was built, the marble pool was built with uh, county funds, I believe, uh, in the middle 70s. Okay, so okay, we have had a pool, here. okay. So forget my thought on there. I do remember that Palmetto, uh, the 850,000 was over 15 years, correct? Was that- That was agreement? at one point in time discussion. I, but that I think changed? I don't know. I've been, I the, was told by staff at one point. What we would like to know is for you to discuss what you want. We'll go back and figure out the money at some point in time. The mayor and I will chat and the city council will chat and the board will chat. But what is it that we're trying to come up with in order, to, what do you want to build? Okay, well, now's the time we're all talking, so I'd appreciate everybody being treated, everybody respectfully, because this is the time that we all can talk without breaking the sunshine law. So that's why I'm asking these questions. Some may think it's dumb and some may not. So uh, the reason why the costs have gone up is, is it because of the cost of the construction uh, of everything? I know Priscilla has a tree farm and she's complaining about how much everything's gone up just in her little business. So, you know, 
Okay, again, it's all, up to me, it's about how we can all work together. I think we all, we gotta move forward. I mean, I'm, I'm sick of this. We've been doing this for a long time with Larry Bustle in that room over there. We need to get off the dime and do something, but I think the boards need to get together and it can't be just the county's gonna pay uh, everything except what was committed years ago. Uh, it's a lot more money than we planned on years ago. So I think if we want to get it done, like we say, for the kids and the citizens, Brian, hopefully you'll think about it, consider it my friend, my old friend. We all need to uh, put some skin in the game and um, shame on all of us if we don't do this. This is going to cost us more and it's going to cost the city more. But if we want this, let's do it and um, hopefully we can come back together in a few months. Mayor Bryant. <laughs> It's, it's interesting because this very week, um, our, um, our group, our, the commissioners and our department heads and I, we go out and uh, visit mobile home parks and, you know, subsequent between now and March, we'll go out to every community development district. We go to every mobile home park in the city of Palmetto and we try to take our show on the road, tell them what's going on. We let them ask any questions that they want to ask. Interestingly enough, at Tropic Isles, one of the questions was... I've been coming here since 1992, and I've heard and heard and heard about a pool. When are we going to get off the dime? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's a, a really, it's, it just was really poignant, you know, that the community, really across the community, is asking that same question. I would tell you um, earlier, because I have a question that I want to ask too for clarification, but um, it's clear to me the three million is off the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, it clearly doesn't satisfy anybody or, or any of the criteria that we were originally going for. Um, I know um, I strongly support, first and foremost, about the kids and teaching them how to swim. But while you're doing that, there's so much more that you can accomplish with this project. The one of the things, and I think um, I appreciate Commissioner Whitmore and Commissioner Bellamy because I think what they're asking is, what can we agree on that we, you know, really all want to go back to our individual meetings and discuss and come up with how we can pay for them? We obviously want all the amenities because those are essential to being successful to have, you know, parties and programs and competition there. One of the things I want to know is, do, is there enough distinction or is there enough need because we talk about a competitive pool? To me, um, what I'm understanding, a competitive would be high school and college. Right. And that makes a big difference about the pool. The meters and the yards is what, what I'm told. How much of a difference does that make that alters what what we're really looking at as far as the cost because clearly that's a that's a huge difference from what I am I'm understanding you know there there are two different benchmarks so I you know I'd like to see I, I'd like to get the the feedback from those people I'm I'm not a swimming enthusiast by any, by any means but is it is it imperative to have the uh, Olympic pool or because I think what we're looking at is for high school and college. So I, I'd like to just, if we could come to a consensus on that, I think we could, you know, come down and narrow down because I think everybody here wants to have the amenities. I think yeah. they, they recognize if you don't have the amenities, you're not going to have a successful project. You're not going to have what everybody had. You know, we've had our eye on this, this uh, moving target, but at the end, we're not going to get what we went after if we don't have those amenities. So I'd, I'd like to arrive at uh, which pool are we really looking at? Good question. Uh, Vanessa, you're next on the list. I think it's interesting because one thing that you definitely hear from all of us that we all agree with, we need a pool. But it's got to be a pool big enough for the people to use. And what I've seen so far, it's not. The three million is definitely out. I do agree with the mayor. I was going to ask that question, actually. I think we need to look at, um, you know, you talk about $7 million. That figure keeps coming up. Well, I've got a feeling that, you know, it's going to take $7 million just to get a pool. 
that is big enough to really use and also to have the amenities included in. You can't have the pool without the amenities. It would be foolish. Uh, why are you going to bother spending taxpayer money if you don't have everything there that you're going to need in order for the people to enjoy themselves and be able to learn? I mean, I know a big thing for me was giving um, um, the kids a place to learn how to swim. Um, you know, then I, I'll be honest with you, the competition pool, I mean, I can see we're high school and college because I've complained about that. Because believe it or not, where most of the growth has gone on in this county, we don't have pools. We have little tiny little pools in our backyard. Uh, I think Parrish, a lot of the homes being built have those. But, you know, we don't have a, a competition pool either. We need one. I'm not saying we don't. Um, but, you know, I think we really need to concentrate it's not an international type thing that I think we need. I think we need one to, to be able to have for our, our kids in school and our colleges, for our students that you know live here and, and need to learn and, and be able to have a pool to uh, practice in for the swim meets and so forth. I think that is important. And we do have that at GT Bray and also John Marble. I could see the importance of having it in Palmetto. Um, you know, I, I, I do believe that we all need to get on the same page and move this forward. Now is the time. We are this close. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that we can all agree. Uh, we all need to give a little bit. I'm not saying we don't. So does the county. So does Palmetto. But we all need to work together for the betterment of the community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Davis. Well, most, most everybody has already said this around the table. We do need to build the best pool for this community, for the Manatee County as a whole, because this is going to be a stamp on the county saying, look, this is the best pool that we can build for our constituents. Um, talking about the water line or uh, storm water line, storm water lines can be moved. It's but really they can't. I mean, yeah. it's, it's going to, it'll cost, but it can be yeah. moved. You want to pay 20 They can't be moved. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff. It's going to cost something somewhere. So let's build this pool and do it right. And I think we can all agree that it'll be a great day when it does groundbreaking starts. I'm ready for it. Thank you. Uh, Priscilla? Well, just to kind of move it on, my number one priority is capacity. I don't want a 60-person pool that the kids are standing around waiting for somebody else to jump out. Yeah. Number one thing is to teach the kids to, to swim yeah. and to let them have a place to recreate all summer long. So right. if we're building something smaller than what you already have on the south side of the river, that's wrong. If you can get 100 kids in a pool there, we should be thinking 120 to 130 because so, we know we're growing. So number one, we need to make sure we have a big enough pool to have enough kids in there during the summer that, that we can do. I think we should have the competition where the kids can. I'm not that worried about the international. If we have to give up the international, so be it. We don't have that many. Number two, that contractor needs to come back, and I know he's sitting back there. I don't understand how we started off with $3 million with everything we wanted because you told us nine months ago that you could do that. I'm in business. My expenses have not gone up. Uh, almost triple. 30 percent, yes, but not triple. So I have a very, very, very hard time even talking about this because I like to work with actual numbers. What does this mean? You told me three million dollars. Now you're at seven million and we still don't get what you said at three million. So that contractor needs to really, when he comes back and we say we want 130 kids, we want whatever it is we have to have for minimum on bathrooms, whatever we have to have for buildings. Well, by golly, whatever number you say, I'm holding you to it. I wasn't the one that talked to you the first time, but I'm telling you, I expect that number to be correct. I want to know if this is a $5 million pool, a $7 million pool, or a $20 million pool. I don't want these imaginary numbers. I don't think Steve Johnson does either. It doesn't work in the banking area. <laughs> but number one is get the kids in the swimming pool. Let's teach them to swim, and let's let our high schools work out. Thank you, Priscilla. Uh, Commissioner Cornwell. 
When we're talking about competitive um, and the motion that was made and already approved by the county commission, competitive included the dive well. And the reason no, that we no, were talking City did. The reason that we were talking about the dive well was that there is none in the county at all. And so with building the new hotel, what the dive well would do, it would allow us the opportunity not just to do swim competitions, but diving competitions that just aren't available in our community. So you're already digging a hole. You're only talking about increasing some depth and so forth in areas and I, I know you're disagreeing with me, but we certainly can pull the minutes from that meeting. We also did not agree to 28.33%. We agreed to dollar amounts. I don't know where that came from, but that was not something that the city of Palmetto said. Do I think everyone's going to have to spend some more money? Yes, but we talked dollars. We didn't talk percents ever. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Let's talk a little bit about parking. We have a tunnel and a huge amount of land on the other side of that tunnel. For those of you who do not know the Lincoln area, because I was there for 19 years of my life teaching. So I'm telling you, there's parking space available, already hard paved parking space. Not only does it make that wonderful, the tunnel now becomes again active. And then that can be used for concessions, for all kinds of, of opportunities for you know, all of us to make some fundraising. So when you talk about parking, you need to look at that facility as a whole because there's a lot of parking over there. But again, with the hotel coming in, think about it. Do we not want to accomplish an opportunity to be able to fill that hotel as much as we can? And how much closer is that pool than that hotel that's right here near the Civic Center that we're building? So let's look at that opportunity and look at what we need to do for our students, for competition, and the fact that we have the funds now. Let's make the facility one that, that we certainly can. I know we have a little disagreement on that, but um, it just makes sense. You know, it makes a lot of sense to do it now while we're putting that gun. Because look where it's located, okay? You can drive right through from Hillsborough County easily, mm -hmm. okay? It's a great location for going by. And look what it's going to do for businesses and business opportunities. I mean, it will just, it's a win-win situation. So thank you very much for listening to me. I hope that we can come to an agreement. Thank you. Betsy? Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, again, uh, we all adopt our budgets. We all have looked at every tax dollar, every tax dollar and where it's going. We've put together, because we did get the uh, half, sunny, um, half penny sales tax for <coughs> infrastructure, and every one of us put together a list that has been presented to the public that they voted on mm -hmm. that did not have this pool on it. The list would have to be amended to transfer money. I'm not saying it can't, but that's a promise that we made to our constituents, and we have to do it. We have to look at this from a countywide tax revenue. We've not built a new pool, but we have a revenue source for parks. It's called park impact fees. And we have to put that revenue source to where the growth areas are in the county. We're doing that. We put together a budget, talked about a number. We had a number too. We had the number $3 million minus your 850. Right. That was the number we were given. That's the number what we adopted our budget. That's what we knew we were dealing with. So now we know we're dealing with something between five and $7 million. We got to come up with that money and we're hoping that you have to come up with that, your share as well. That's just reality. I don't think the idea that the county has unlimited funds is real. I hear it all the time. I see people come to our meetings and tell us that. I can tell you that our budget people tell us that's not true. That's not factual. And we do have to answer to every single constituent in the county about where they're, we're spending their ad valorem tax dollars. Same thing with impact fees. We have to answer to all of the folks that pay that impact fee where do those impact fee dollars go? What impacts are being caused by the growth of that housing and how are we meeting those impacts? 
That's just reality too. I think we're talking realistically between five and seven million dollars. We've got to come up with a real number because we're talking about a pool that will have enough space to accommodate the expected need and to accommodate practice and high school meets. Not a dive well. We never voted on a dive well. I remember being at the meeting when we got back to after our summer break and the city sent us a letter saying it had a dive well in it. I brought it up at our board meeting. I said, we never had a dive well in the plan. The city voted to have a dive well. I saw that. And I said, we need to respond to that letter. We need to respond to that letter because there's no dive well. Part of the problem with the dive well is because we do have a significant hard pan in here. <laughs> You're talking about a hole. Holes are not easy to create sometimes in Florida. We have sometimes real issues with creating deep holes. That and the cost, we, we were told, was not going to make a dive well something that could be accommodated in this pool. I know we've, the city has talked about it a lot. I get it, you know, that would be great to have another dive well. But at some point, we have to have a realistic budget so that we know what we're talking about, we can find the funding within our budget. It, it just makes sense that we do that and move forward. And I'm gonna say again that we need to, talk, we need to build in these amenities. They're not in the budget now. We need to build them in so this will be something that we are all proud of. The GTE has okay, a- Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm actually I next on the list as I'm, hopefully we try to wind this up one way or the other at some point. But, uh, you know, sitting back, listening to uh, everybody discuss it, I think what we need to do is give, you know, direction back to the staff as to what mm -hmm. the, all of us seem to feel here and, and Kind of writing that down, I, you know, to me, it's you know, we, we want to see them come back to us with a pool that's compet that can be a competitive pool. I think we want to see a pool that's got full amenities to it, so that it can be used as a recreational area for families, or when it's not being used as in a competition area. And obviously, you know, money's a big issue. And um, you know, I mean, I think you know, we all would like to drive around in big Mercedeses. But sometimes, you know, some of the, uh, a good Chevy works pretty well too, type of thing. But I don't think we want to end up in a uh, Ford Fiesta, because that wouldn't be right to the citizens, you know, here in Palmetto and in the county. Um, so I, I think, you know, ultimately, you know, the, the commission, Manatees Commission, we needed to go back and, and our staff needs to go back and kind of have that direction and then work with uh, the city of Palmetto and then try to come up with uh, the pool. Like I say, maybe we can combine them and so we can have a, an area where we can have a walk-in area for the young kids so they can learn how to swim and then have that combined with the competition area so you can, you know, you don't want them in, the, the young children in there learning how to swim when you got, you know, kids in there compete, competing. And likewise, they don't compete 24-7. So hopefully, uh, you know, there could be some trade-off there. It's like a double usage of that pool, and I think that would be important to me if that's a, a feasible type of alternative to it. And to me, again, I think we, I'm hearing from all you all, amenities is, is a major consideration, you know, because, you, you know, it does get a little warm here in July and August. And, uh, you know, if you're going to be out there in the middle of Lincoln Park, you probably would like to get out of the sun for a while, especially if you're a parent, you know, putting the, as my parents did put, you know, copper tone 42 inches thick all over me when I went to Siesta Key as a young man. So, um, you know, those are kind of my comments and, and I think we just have to, you know, we've got some more people here that want to speak, but I think, you know, if we can just kind of direct our comments as to what you'd like to see the, your staff do and what we want to see our staff do, we can, you know, you know, get, get some new information and then I think it'd be appropriate for us to get back together and look at it at that point. And then again, we've got a golden opportunity now. You know, as somebody said, you know, we're, we're really close to the goal line here, you know, and it's been way too long in coming. So let's push this over the, the goal line and, and, and get it started. You know, it isn't getting any cheaper as we know. And as Priscilla said, we went from three million to five million to, I, I hate to think what it might be, you know, by the end of the summer. Um, so I think the sooner we get it and get the ball rolling, the cheaper it's gonna be for all of us, and especially for the taxpayers in the long run. 
So those are my comments. And next up is Reggie. Oh, sorry. Mr. Chair, I don't raise my hand a couple times. Oh, I'm sorry. A few times. Uh, I'll, I'll let you butt in line. How's that? that okay. okay. Um, what I need to know is what the difference between the international pool and the high school competition pool. Yeah. Can uh, anyone tell me that? A high school and collegiate pool can competition can take place in a 25 yard long lane, 25 yard pool. Okay. The seven million right there is that for international pool? It's a 25 meter distance. Mm -hmm. It's like the 100 yard dash used right. to be the, it's now the t t you know, meter dash. Uh, but international competitions rotate around meters rather than yards. And so if you have a 25 yard pool, it's not long enough to handle a com international or Olympic no, no, competition. No, no, I'm, I'm saying just high school competition. High school and college, both 25 yards, mm -hmm. which is what um, the- Another um, one is 25 meters, you're saying? A 25 meter is for Olympic competition. Okay, so all we need is 25 yards. All you need is 25 yards for high school and collegiate. Uh, I think um, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the county can uh, get together and, and come up with their amount. Um, <coughs> the city itself, you know, we don't, we ain't, we're not big like the county. Um, so I know if we can come up with our part, I know y'all got to be able to come up with y'all part. Um, that's what I'm looking at, you know, and uh, we need a pool uh, for competition, high school, college. That's what we need. And I'm pretty sure what we can get together and get that done. Well, you know, we can keep on coming to do meetings and meetings and the pool gonna get higher, it seemed like to me. Uh, that's what it seemed like to me. I, and, uh, we need to get a price on that high school pool competition and for that college pool competition. That's what we need a, that's what we need a price for, not the international. We need a price for that, because um, that's what we're looking at, high school competition and college. So they can have meets and everything there, and uh, the kids from our community can learn how to swim and have competition meets right there from our community and actually for the whole, whole county. Uh, we get bigger and bigger, so that's when I think we should get together and get that done. That's it. Thank you. All right, uh, a couple things. Um, it was tossed around that maybe the location may change as far as we have the option to change the location, not from off the site, but where we put it on the site based on the size. If that comes up as an option within the dollar figure that we have, when we come back to the table, could we please make sure that the contractor, you know, have that so we can all um, see um, the location change and things like that. That's, that's the first thing. Um, the, the, the second thing, as far as how do we move forward, um, looking, looking at the numbers, as I'm not sure, ma'am, where, where the percentages come from, but I think the, the, the reality of it is, is that the accountability piece is, you know, the county has their 78% and the city of Palmetto has their, I mean, 72 and then 28. Are, are we still there? I'm just, I'm just curious. But no, that, that needs to come on the table. We don't, we don't need to walk away and act like that doesn't exist. We need, we need to make sure um, before we leave here. Now, the conversation was stated as far as you read the dollar amount, and I'm not sure how it came up to the percentages, but the way I guesstimate is whatever the dollar amount was, all right, they came up with that as the percentage, and as the numbers um, continue to take and get a little bit higher, you still identify what that 28% was, okay, from the county standpoint and the city standpoint. Am I correct on that staff? You are correct. Okay, so. With understanding that, with understanding that, where we are right now, that the county has uh, agreed a 72%, not a dollar amount, a 72%, and we need to make sure that the city of Palmetto, all right, the city of Palmetto has a 28%. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is I, I don't want to walk away and we're trying to figure out, you know, what, what, who has what skin in the game. We, as this workshop right here, needs to put that on the table and make sure it's very clear when we walk away, all right, okay, the county's gonna have their 72% and the city's gonna have their 28%. When the number increase, because we already know it's going to increase. We already know the number's going to increase. Mr. So, Bellamy, what we're looking for is high school, 
We want to see that for the high school and for the college, not for the international. Right. Competition. That's what we're looking for. And then we get together. And you can get with your commission, and we're going to get with our commission. And we're going to vote on that. That's how we do that. That's how we do things around here. That's what I just said. That's what you said. Yeah. yeah. Well, you took my rights before we leave here, I thought. That's what you said. Well, what I'm saying is to agree to the percentages. The skin in the game, what the city of Palmetto skin in the game will be, and what Manatee County skin in the game will be. That's what I'm saying. That's what we need to deal with before we leave, because when everyone go back, we have to take and meet with our county administrator and look at the numbers and everything like that, and I'm sure the city of Palmetto has to do the same thing. But are we obligated? Are we going to hold to our obligation? Or are we committed? Shall I say that's a bad word? Are we committed to the 72 from the county and the 28 from the city? I don't want to talk for the city, but one thing I want to say is um, we need to know what the price is before we can commit to any percentage. Y'all got money. We don't have the same money y'all have. Yeah, we're saying the same thing. But we still need to make sure we're going to commit to the percentages. I'm going to say again, we're not going to commit to a percentage. Excuse me. I can't vote, so we can't. I'm next. Yeah, it's not a vote. Okay. I'm next to speak. Second. Are you through? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, one, I, I wanted to, to comment. I think we've made great strides today because I know when all this started, I kept hearing competitive high school, college, Olympic size, the difference in the meters and the yards, and, and that, makes, that makes a difference. We've made some strides. I think there's pretty much a consensus on that. Mm -hmm. The one other thing that's kind of like a hanging chat is do we – is it the consensus for a dive well or not? And so that's something maybe that each board has to go back and talk about. It was, it was of interest to the city commission, to, to the board in Palmetto. The way that it came up, uh, the percentages, was just for, for really guesstimating moving forward because based on what we initially talked about, Palmetto's was like 28 point something percent of the total. And so they were just basing the calculations to move forward if that was just a sliding scale that moved forward. Mm -hmm. So naturally we can't commit if it was a three or five, I mean, I think three is ridiculous, but going to, to five million or whatever, you know, we have to go back and look at our funding. Um, we did not, when we went out and spoke everywhere, we didn't talk about the half cent sales tax for a pool either. It's, and unlike the county or city of Brainton, some of the others, the funds that we get from that are much more restrictive total over the 15 years. Ours is not quite $15 million. So uh, we have a lot of roads and, uh, and we've had parks we've had to take the equipment out of because it was so in such poor condition. So I would tell you from, from that standpoint, we've got to look at our funding sources, but I'm hoping in making a decision, a, a finite, uh, finite decision, dive well or no, adding the amenities, and if even it's possible as far as what Commissioner Cornwell mentioned, the parking across the street. Um, of course, that's school board property, but they should have some skin in this game. And obviously, back in the day, it's just like Mr. Williams pointed out, they, they did. They were part of educating. But on this, even though that's school board property, it should maybe be a player in it. And, and maybe that's something that we could seek out. Exactly. And I think they're, I think they're, uh, I think they're on board with moving forward on that as part of their overall project. Mm -hmm. So, but I think we've made a lot of strides today. And uh, the one thing I do want to do, I'd like to go ahead as soon as possible, set the next meeting, and let's get this done. I wish I could do that motion, but we we want to we want to get this done, and we want to be digging dirt and. Uh, having the big party out there, right. and it'll be a big party. Right. So anyway, but if we, could, if we could set it up as soon as possible and come back to the table and get it done. I'm out of All order, right. but I also, are there going to be bleachers? Because we're going to definitely need bleachers for something of this. It will be. Thank you. I'm sorry for being rude. Good evening. You're allowed to tackle us. Commissioner Cornwell. Well, um, we're talking as if the citizens of Palmetto don't pay county taxes. 
we pay what everybody else in the county does. Our citizens pay extra tax to be a city. So our city is one of the oldest in this whole community. Every park, every pool, every dog walking park, everything the city of Palmetto has contributed equitably to every county citizen. So when you say your money, our money, your money is our money. For hundred, over a hundred years, we have done that. So it, you, you seem to have lost the fact that your money that you have, as Ms. Banak was saying, you've gotten many, many dollars from this city to help support the other community and the growth areas. What we're asking uh, to come back is, you know, if I were to even, let's put a percent on it, an interest rate <laughs> on the percent of money that we have, um, you know, you given to the county that has gone out of the city. I mean, if you think about that and the, and the age of the city, you can understand that there's a difference. So don't think that your money isn't our money, because it is. Everything that you spend is money our citizens have contributed to for far before Lakewood Ranch was ever thought of. Oh, I knew that was far funny. before um, many okay, of the let, beach let's events. Let's stay on track here. Of. You know, we're getting well, off I'm, a little I'm bit. I'm staying on track because Ms. Banak opened the door on that, and I'm sorry okay, about we'll that. Okay, we'll finish up quickly. And secondly, um, when we're talking about years, um, Ms. Whitmore mentioned that it began with Mayor Bessel. It didn't. It began long before that. So, but I've been here before you were here. So what I'm saying to you is it's long before that. This has been over 20, well, 25 years, something like that, 30 years. So <laughs> the point is we all want the same thing. I'm not disagreeing with that. But statements are made without consideration of how our citizens feel because that's how we feel, that it just keeps going out and the money doesn't come back equitably in just because of the number of years that we've committed. So. Okay, Betsy, you can have a minute rebuttal. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My minute rebuttal is I'm excited about the money that does go um, county taxes because they go to the CRA. And the CRA has an opportunity to participate and make this a wonderful facility because that's where the county tax dollars go to your CRA. So it's important and I'm looking forward to that. And I know you have made commitments to the hotel. I really know very little about the hotel. I knew a lot more about the last one, but I know that's a very exciting time. This is an exciting time for this entire area. We partnered together on this grant. Um, I'm excited that DOT has committed to improving this tunnel. The uh, opportunity, I always, I always praise the city for the ability that they have to get grants. Uh, you guys are rock stars when it comes to searching out for other money. But certainly the CRA is a mechanism that was put in place to capture those county tax dollars and keep them in the city. So we've got real opportunity to work together and let's do it. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Williams. Pass the mic back and forth. Um, I just want to say that the focus that we need to do is, is keep this in mind that this is for the entire county. That's all it is, is for the county and for the kids. I will stick my neck out right now and say that this will be an item on our next agenda. And we will discuss it. We're going to try to finalize what we can do and probably get the messages through the mayor back to you all. Agreed. Carol? Thank you. And uh, good idea about the tunnel. That was a great idea. But as a former city commissioner and a mayor of a city for 16 years, I get where you're coming from. But then I got in this world and it's a whole different picture. It really is um, a, a microcosm of, you know, what, what I had before. So I get what you're saying. I've been here. I've been complaining, griping to the county for years when I was on the other end. And then I had my eyes open on this end. But there is a dive well, guys, in Manatee County. It's at GT Bray. We haven't mentioned that. We heard that there wasn't. There is. Competitive. Uh, they do have to close the whole pool down. Yeah. Yeah, they have to. Cl yeah, we have one. Charlie Hunsaker said we do. They have to actually close the whole pool down when there is a dive event. Everything has to be closed down. So 
when we're looking at what we're doing, let's think about this. Okay, Mayor and, and um, Ed are gonna get together and come up with another work session. We're gonna talk about this at our meetings, but I am gonna tell you, I can't support anything without um, support, more support from the city of Palmetto if we do go for the five million, which is kind of what Harold's talking about, which has the collegiate and high school competition. Ray Fusco, a lot of you know him. His grandson, he drives him all over, all over, because there isn't enough pools to do. Uh, he's in high school at Manatee, I think. He's on some weird name, fish uh, uh, swim team. Goes all over, and they even have to go to St. Pete Clearwater because there's not enough places to compete. So this is, I think, what we're all looking for, and I agree with the mayor. I think we actually finally narrowed some of the stuff down. Thank you. Any other questions? Adjourned. Oh, no.